Today's review will be covering the first three books in a nine-part series. Otherwise, it will be a little bit fast-paced, a bit shorter for each book just to fit in for time. Otherwise, let's get into it. Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Casey at Hypersanity Books and today I'll be reviewing Galaxy Maverick series, the first three out of nine books by Michael Leron, fellow YouTuber. This is a picture of him, just pulling that up. He has, this is the video I was watching when asking him about doing the review. He has done plenty of videos, he has a lot of amazing content to follow. And with this particular video, he touched on this series, and I thought I'll give it a go. He has done a lot of books. I think it's 51 in total so far, and more are coming. There is, as a series, I think this one works really well, how it's kept to the word count to the amount of chapters, and going between characters per book. If I say it a name and it's incorrect, there will be subtitles to support that. With this particular story, it starts off with Grayson, a very strong character. He was smart. There was a lot that complemented to him as a protagonist, mentioning from the previous video by Michael Leron, talked a lot about little things that characters do and sometimes it's relatable and not relatable. And certain experiences, such as riding a motorbike, has not been relatable to me. However, for the purposes, it was easy to follow. You could get into character quite easily with this book. And even though being science fiction, there's certain experiences that we have, don't have, it still felt easy to get into the character. That was a good point with this main character. That also being said, I feel with this series so far that Grayson will be the central protagonist of the series when it unfolds. Moving along, there are other characters within perspective, other characters along the journey. Moving along, there's it's based in the Ra galaxy. Uh, yeah, so this was a good complement to setting up the the general setting into that escape from our world. It was good how it mentioned other certain referencings. The Arguses, the, they're a pig race. It was explained where it's a little bit of tell instead of show, which worked well in this particular case. It got to a point where it's a scientific thing sent off into space years ago with different DNA, and this race was created that way. It added that antagonistic force when we're talking about military combat. It felt good in this context because the reality when you look at a, a heavyweight mixed martial artist, they have to weigh in at 264 pounds. This particular race weighs 400 pounds. The way they move it, it was explain, ex explained a little bit humorous as this particular race was with the tusks. They weighed in at 400 pounds. So you imagine a heavyweight mixed martial artist throwing a punch and the kind of damage they can do. This kind of race would do a lot of damage. It had that hostile feel setting up the antagonists within the series. Uh, it introduces Orjok as the central, I believe he's the central antagonist of this entire series. I found he had that particular way of interrogating, uneasy, not easy to negotiate with because in his mind being a overlord, it made a lot of sense. There's different interpretations with what I'm saying, just is my own opinions to this review. It, it is good. Otherwise, that's it for the moment for book one. Book two, Phantom Planet, introduces Klet. She was an interesting survivalist. There is a lot more dexterity into this character. 
she was quite enjoyable. It introduces the Zachary Galaxy. So it talks about the Ra Galaxy and it expands to another. And this slowly expands the this particular universe. So as a book series, if this was adaptated into film or anything else, I think it would be quite a good one because it has that steadily piece of information per book. So if you were to compare it to a movie or something like that, it wouldn't be the right comparison. But as a TV series or a complete series, this one is quite good. Now, it carries through with the story. There's, um, so Miss, um, so Clet Sheffield is her name. I quite liked her last name, and for me it was really hard to not think of Mr. Sheffield from The Nanny because you heard that name many times as a kid. That was a little bit of a barrier for me, but that's just me. Moving along, there's um, a command, there's the reintroduction of Grayson in chapter 15, and that was good. It was like, I know this character, so that was something that, that I found complemented this particular book while it was still a unique unique episode focused on her character. Laron Books Direct, a bookstore that's a bit of a self-insert. I love that sort of thing. That's something that I'm hoping to see as I'm consuming more of these books by this author. I'm hoping to see some more self-inserts. So I love that sort of thing. The McAllister Corporation, it comes into the story. It introduces four colonels. So for this female character, it, it focuses on four colonels being introduced with special talents and ones from Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force. She talks about wishing it was a little bit more of a female within the service. This added something more to her character. There was a particular part where she's up against an Argson and she gives a warning to Grayson to, to run. And in that moment, he's not responding quickly. He's more like, huh? And in that moment, the scene, it, it's focused on her and the fight focuses on him where he's knocked out onto the street and this creature comes out. And in that moment, she's managed to get herself a car and pull up and say, get in. As they're driving down the road, getting away from this creature of 400 pounds, it's running down the road trying to keep up with them. It felt very fast paced. It didn't feel too unrealistic onto the main point the way this character was developed in this story, she was very fast paced. And I like that. She's the kind of person who's just gonna get the job done. She's not going to stop and think in the moment. I found her character to be better than Grayson in some ways, more enjoyable uh, for a character to read and get into. And that was one of the biggest points of book two when we're talking about the characterization. And this author knows a lot about main characters if you're looking at his videos. He definitely has shown that within his work. Book three, Zero Magnitude. This particular story focuses on a completely different character. One thing, when you go between characters with books, you may find a character that you really just don't like. This wasn't the case for me. Surprisingly, a nine-year-old girl as the protagonist was so far the most favorite character that I've read in this series so far. This character has a really rough life, slavery, no family, and there's a particular scene where some Argans have them, children working with, pit, with a pick, as you've seen in prison films where they're chipping away in a quarry, but this is on an asteroid and they're held down by a certain weight and things that have connected into the asteroid so they don't float away. This particular part I'll just read out, and I've, I'm cutting it short. The chains under Devi slackened, and she stumbled backwards. An Argon nearby held a hatch in his hand. He had ripped it from the rock. 
He had ripped the chains loose. Nothing held her. A line of children drifted into space. Debbie felt the rock float away from under her. And her, she reached out her hand. There was nothing to grab. No, she cried. A child drifted by her. Wilma Bowles. He had a blank expression on his face. Debbie reached for him. He reached for her, but they missed. And they flew past one another in different trajectory, trajectories. The f fighter ships swept over the asteroid and rained gunfire across the surface. The Argus fell quickly and silently. Her suit beat low oxygen. This particular science fiction element was still easy to follow. The situation that she's in, to be completely screwed, was something that made this character strong in certain parts of the story. Her name is Devika, they call her Devi for short. This particular character has a bit of character development but has a pre-existing history that is just really, really bad. And for the purposes of this story, it keeps to the current matters. And I think that's really good how it was the story unfolding without being stuck in flashbacks. Without too many spoilers, there is a character introduced by the name of Mary from Galaxy Protective Services, which is for children. Now, they form a bit more of a relationship where this social worker is looking at adopting her. It sort of goes between protagonist and deuteragonist and then switching roles with the adult figure taking on the protagonist role. And this really worked in well because it was an extremely difficult subject, very difficult circumstances. There is a lot of mystery still there and without um, too much information, there's more of a slow burn through this series. With the situation at hand, Debbie talks about, she, she talks about looking at being a police officer and Mary explains how yeah, she's seen too much over the years, a lot of injustice. This type of thing handled a lot of difficult subject matter, but extremely well. And that is why this book series, I think, is really good for middle grade it and above, because it's not too heavy, the subject matter. And on the, sort of, on the note, they're in the courtroom, Debbie's parents are there, they're an elderly couple to meet for the first time. There is a lot, without trying to spoil the book, there is a lot going on within the story for this poor child. Mary explains to be presenting herself to the judge and not to be afraid and tell the truth. This kind of situation is really hard. Law works differently all around the world. In this context, it works in a particular way in this particular fictional world. And that sometimes interpretation can be a little bit difficult where it can be open to objective scrutiny. However, I think the author has done a fantastic job with this particular sensitive subject matter, which, as I was saying, leads to it being suitable for a middle grade audience to have an introduction into science fiction. I believe this book series would be very good as an opening point if you're looking at collecting books. Even with this particular series for ebook, it's reasonably priced. I have to say it's really, really good. Now, moving along with this review, I have to say there's a lot of things that I can't touch on because it is trying to keep the review a little bit tight. Therefore, I rated the first book around three out of five, rated up to four stars. With the second book, I rated it at four stars. And with the third book, I rated it at five. As a total, I would say with this series, it's between four and five stars. The author should be extremely impressed with himself and he's still doing lots of work today. I am looking forward to carrying on with 
the further review to focus on book four, five, and six, and then do another review on seven, eight, nine, and then maybe a review for the entire wind up for the whole se whole series. Otherwise, that's it for today. Please hit like, subscribe, comment if you enjoyed a little bit of this review. If you'd like me to read your book, please put something in the comments. If I don't know that your book exists, how can I read it? And some books I may not get to read. Otherwise, that's it for today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.